Thank you for joining us for another episode of Looking to Jesus, as usual. I'm John. I'm the preacher. My name is John Hines. I'm the preacher for the Church of Christ in North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'm joined by... My name is Daniel Sanders. I am the preacher for the Norwalk Church of Christ, located just west of North Ridgeville, so south he- of So help Cedar me, if Point. you start talking about Cedar Point again... North of the Huron County Fair this week. We're like We're like going for the social <laughs> gospel in this episode or something. I don't know what we're doing. Good to see you, Daniel. How are you doing? Doing all right. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. So last week we talked about dispensations, and I keep as in I keep getting the word wrong. I keep wanting to say deposition or dis- disposition. I'll correct you. I'll Those correct are not you the same thing. Or just laugh over here. You'll probably just laugh. That's what people have been doing a lot this week, Abby. So it's this. We last week we talked about dispensation, how God dispenses His will, how He has dispensed His will, and how He dispenses His will now. And we we talked about just for example there in Hebrews where it says, you know, God who had in various ways and times spoke in times past, but now speaks through His Son, and that's going to the idea of dispensation. I thought we might, just as a jumping off point, it made me think of one, I don't think we touched on it last week, in the account of the Mount of Transfiguration. And there as, you know, Jesus is on that mountain, most of the disciples are down at the base, but he's on the mountain with, it's Peter, James, and John, right? Yes. And then they fall asleep, and they wake up, and all of a sudden, there Jesus is with Moses and Elijah. Peter says, hey, it's good for us to be here. Make a tent, one for each of you. I think it's actually, um, yeah, Mark's account in verse 6. This is Mark 9 at verse 6. Because he did not know what to say, for they were greatly afraid. And then the voice comes from, voice comes out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. So you have Moses, Elijah, representation of the law and the prophets, and you have God saying, this is my son, here I am. That may also be speaking to the idea of dispensations. And it's like who at God, who at various times spoke in times past, but now speaks through his son. And just that idea of you, you hear Jesus, you look to Jesus. Yeah. Do you think about the different things that are happening there of Moses representing the law, Elijah representing the prophets as kind of revealed there. And those are some of the different critical times there in the Old Testament. We could, you know, as we were talking last week, it could represent some of the different time periods uh, in these different dispensations. Again, I think it all falls under, generally speaking, as we were talking some last week about the Mosaic period of time. But here it is. This is where we switch to Jesus. We listen to Jesus. It's applicable for us today of listening to Jesus, hearing his words as God was saying those things there on that mount to Peter, James, and John, some of the people that we call the pillars of the early beginnings of the church. So what what we're going to be doing going forward, at least for the next few episodes, we're going to be thinking about basically what it means to be a Christian as we hear Jesus. And we're going to be looking at different names found in the Bible for God's people. And so some of the things we're going to touch on, what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about sheep. We are sheep of his, of his flock. And so we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about that and how that shows our relationship with the Lord. Future episodes, we're probably going to talk about saints. We're going to talk about disciples. We're going to talk about members, being members of the body. All those are different names given and other things as well, other names as well. 
it, it shows different facets of what does it mean to be a Christian, and, and each one is is meant to help us. So today we're going to talk about sheep. So here in Mark, we might go back just a few pages. This is Mark chapter six, and this is the build up to the feeding of the five thousand. This is Mark six verse. Verse 30, then the apostles gathered to Jesus, told them all things, both what they had done, what they had taught, as he had sent them out. Verse 31, he said to them, come aside by yourselves to a deserted place, because there was many comings and goings. They didn't even have time to eat. So they departed to a, de- de- to a deserted place uh, in the boat by themselves. The multitude saw, and they came. Jesus, verse 34, and Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep, not having a shepherd. And so he began to teach them many things. So I thought we might just start there because all of we like sheep have gone astray. And this picture of they're like sheep without a shepherd. All right. So Daniel, so the question, and, and I always ask this in Bible class, what are sheep like without a shepherd? How would you answer that? Well, you think about them being lost or dirty. Uh, I, I, I was, we were talking about it just before we got on. You know, here at Norwalk, we used to have a big sheep pasture right next to where you pull in to go to the building, and you could kind of tell when it was time for them. The, the the wool just kept on getting larger and larger and larger, where you really couldn't even detect or see the face really of the sheep i mean there's just so much different things that are building up on the sheep and that you can't see them or anything like that and they're uh, dirty and like they're dirt dirty they're, they're, they're wool and i mean yeah because you can tell you know sometimes right before they would be right before they'd be sheared you kind of see them kind of wash the sheep a little bit and all of a sudden they're out there you're walking it's like where are these sheep where, yeah. where have they been the whole time yeah uh, but you see, there, there's just they, they've got every little piece of grime and dirt that's attached to them for being away from the shepherd, right. just being able to just be wandering out in the field for however long they were wandering out there for. I wonder how much all that wool weighs. I wish I knew too. You, you know, I'm, I I know it weighs a lot, and my point is, it's a burden to the sheep. Yeah, that when sheep are are lost, and and you know, when they bring them back, it's like they can barely walk. Sometimes they can't walk because the wool weighs them down so much. And what it all points to is we need, we need the Lord's care. Yes. Sheep need to be, they are, they are a somewhat of a domesticated animal. And so they need shepherding. They are not like, (laughs) you know, when we think of, of wild animals, it's like, no, we, we need the shepherd's care. That that's what we need, and if we don't have the shepherd's the shepherd's care, then we're as doomed as we can be. Wow. And so when Jesus looks out on this crowd and and he had compassion on them, because I think the other accounts talk about how they were, you know there's coming and going and it's they're they're aimless. Yeah. And he sees them and they're like sheep not having a shepherd, and so he commands his disciples make them sit down, and they sit down in ranks. And he teaches them many things here, like we read, and then you have the feeding of the 5,000 is what you have. So so I thought we might just start there, that all of us, like sheep, have gone astray, and we need the Lord's care. And if we despise the Lord's care, uh, we'll talk about what what we're acting like more at the end, but we're not acting like the Lord's sheep. So I think from from there we're going to go to John 10. And John 10 is obviously one of the main chapters where this figure is used. It's used extensively. So in John 10, and, oh, I don't know if we, what do you think, Daniel? Should we do it in order or should we jump around a little bit in John 10? Well, you're, we're, we're a little different. You'd probably say order. i say let's jump around, but oh, I'm leaving it up to you. <laughs> All right. All right, I, I guess we'll uh, let, let's let's do it somewhat in order. I guess this is John ten and verse seven. Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and he will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. 
I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. So he uses different metaphors here. There in the first verses, he talks about, I'm the door of the sheep, but then he refers to, I'm the shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And this figure of, he, he uses this figure of the hireling in the next verse, verse 12, but a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. There's actually different parties here. You have the hireling person, but then you also have the wolf, and you also have, you also have the thief. Verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal. All of, the, all of those things speak to protection. The Lord protects his sheep. That's what he does. And that's one reason that, you know, most people, you know, Daniel, of all the people you've known, 99.9% of people, what's their favorite psalm? 23. It's always 23. Every time we go to a funeral, right, what's always on the back of the little thing? Psalm it's never Psalm 22. No. Ever. No, <laughs> it's always Psalm 23, which that's fine. I, I understand why it's a lot of people's favorite Psalm. There's a reason the shepherd has a rod and a staff. And there's actually multiple reasons, I guess I should say. One of the reasons is exactly what the Lord's talking about. The thief comes to steal and the wolf comes to devour. And we need the Lord's protection. I think about David. Yeah. When we were, when we were discussing this, I, you know, the immediate thought for me came to David whenever he was there before he went to face Goliath and mm. Saul was questioning him and he said, "Well, you know, you're just, you know, I'm paraphrasing. You're just a shepherd boy." He said, "When I went out as right. a shepherd boy, I struck the paw of the bear or the right. lion. I fought it with ever whatever I could, yep. with every fiber of my being to be able to protect the sheep." You know, that's that's that mentality. That's what Jesus is offering as well, that sense of protection. And we as sheep are needing that protection, that guidance and that hedge that will help us protect us from different obstacles or different threats that yeah. come our way. And he says, this Philistine, he's not going to be any different than yeah. that lion or that bear. Exactly. The Lord's going to deal with him just as the Lord was with me dealing with the, dealing with the lion and the bear. And that's how the Lord is. Like, it doesn't matter if it's the thief. Or if it's the wolf, or if it's the devil, like he is the good shepherd, and he gives his life for the sheep, and he he protects us. Now, when we think about that, there are wolves. Yeah, the the world would like to think, and and a lot of folks in the religious world would like to think everybody's sheep. No, everybody's not sheep. There are wolves. Yeah. When, when the Lord sends his disciples out and he says, I send you out as sheep amongst wolves. Yeah. And that's Matthew chapter 10 that talks about that. Well, Matthew seven fifteen also Jesus forewarns about beware of false prophets. Yeah, who come to, you, come in, to you in sheep's clothing. In sheep's clothing. Inwardly, inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. Right. And he says, by their fruits, you'll know them. And folks better have their eyes open. Now, the Lord... The Lord protects us. The Lord equips us as well. Yeah. And so we recognize that. We also have the idea we might think about elders in a church, that one of their jobs, for example, is it in um, when Paul's talking to Titus and he talks about some of those individuals whose, whose mouths needed to be stopped. Yeah. And that's referencing what the elders needed to do there within that context. And so you have the shepherds of the church who are serving the chief shepherd, which is what is spoken about in one of Peter's epistles. And so one of their roles is, it's like, one of your jobs is to protect the sheep. Yeah, And so, exactly. so there in Titus as well, I left you in Crete to take care of those things that were lacking. And so we see how the Lord has, has built the church. Because... Sheep do need protected. You, you know, one of the things, and there's there's actually a wonderful book. It's called A Shepherd's Look at Psalm 23. It's not an inspired book, but I think it's written by an Australian, if I'm remembering correctly, an Australian shepherd who had thousands of sheep. And it was, he goes through Psalm 23, but he, he has a, he is a shepherd himself. And, and it's sort of, and one of the points that he makes, I remember, is that when sheep are afraid... They will not eat. They will not eat. They will not rest. They get scared, and 
they freeze up and they they die eventually. They have to be safe. They have to feel safe. And so if you don't have good fences, if you don't have good protection, then you're not going to eat like you should. And when I say eat, we're back to this is my beloved son, hear ye him. Yeah. And it's like the Lord leads me by the green pa- right? The green pastures. The green pastures, right? And and so we think about eating. That brings us to and, and let's hit there in verse 14. I am the good shepherd. And I know my sheep, and I am known by them. That concept of we know the Lord, the Lord knows us. That's the relationship we're supposed to have. To back up, or, or to go a little bit further, verse twenty, verse 27, and the Lord's dealing with some of the Jews who are accusing him of things. And in verse 27, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. That idea of my sheep hear my voice. And this is where it gets into not everybody's a sheep because you have sheep and you have goats. Yeah. You have sheep and you have wolves. You have sheep and you have thieves. You have sheep and you have goats. Now, what's the difference between a sheep and a goat? Speaking as a person who owns a couple of goats. Yes. Bring it. They eat everything. (laughs) Everything or anything. (laughs) Yes. Yes to both. Like last year. I had a beautiful garden going, and I had some I had a whole bunch the of past tomatoes. Tense. Yeah, and they broke the fence. <laughs> of course they did. And they went in there. They ate. I woke up, come outside. They're eating all my tomatoes. Yeah. Get them out. Bring them back in. You know, bring them back in to where they're supposed to be. Get my tomatoes going again. Guess what? They broke in a couple weeks later. We almost had goat dinner. It was that yeah. bad. But anyway, yeah. they'll eat anything. I mean, you know, you throw anything at them. I mean, if you're if I'm standing out there with them, like I was there at the fair yesterday with them, they want to eat my shirt. Yeah. They're just want whatever they can get their whatever they can get their teeth on. Yeah. They're going to try to suck that in and you know destroy everything too. <laughs> okay, so now what's the spiritual application? Because I I would think one application would be when Jesus says, "Take heed what you hear." Yeah, because beware of the we are, we are what we eat. Yeah, and you know the parable of the sower. Not to mix metaphors, but we're mixing metaphors. And in that third group, where you have the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things come in, and they choke the word. Yeah. Well, how, why do you let them in? He, you know, we we were talking about someone who we know who is so wrapped up. And we're not going to mention any names, although that would probably be interesting. But anyway, someone who is so wrapped up in worldly pursuits, and then they'd like to present themselves as not being worldly. Yeah. And it's like, come on. Come on now. It's the desires for other things. It's the cares of the world. And you're you're trying to portray yourself as as something, and it's, and it's folks just it's, better be real careful because... It's easy to think you're a sheep when you're really a goat. It's or easy a to wolf. be able to consume everything. Yeah. You know, when there's no there's no filter. You know, I was just talking about yesterday how I just kept eating and eating and eating and just I got sick from everything that I was eating at the fair. Way to go. Yeah, I know. I'm ruining the fair. What is that? Is that part of the fair experience? Oh, I just I mean, went home and gotta, was miserable. It's gotta be, you gotta sit there and you gotta go eat everything and then just feel miserable for the rest of the night. Yeah, but it's it's at a you're not there's no filter there's no guard and then we just take whatever it is and we see you know for instance we can see what physical harm that can do on a physical body but on our spiritual mind our spiritual body as well just consuming everything and not having that filter or having that protection of everything right. does a lot of harm in us lacking of seeking and serving God and yeah. not serving Him the way that He wants you know again you reference there John eleven twenty seven my sheep hear my voice right you know it's, it's not a matter of just hearing all these different voices or hearing all these different things right if we're going to be disciples if we're going to be let jesus be the good shepherd or the chief shepherd we got to do what he's directing us to do or what he is teaching us to be able to do and we will know him daniel i want to look something up real quick yes and go this, ahead. this may be absolutely nothing but i'm just curious what the prefix d-i-s-c means do you have any idea I have no what idea. What does the prefix, and I'm speaking as I type, 
D-I-S or D-I-S-C mean? I'm just curious. And the reason that I'm curious is... Uh, I wonder if that's... Pardon me for the silence. One of the things that, and I, I'd have to do further research on it, is remove. It is one of the one of the things that it can be associated with. And I was thinking about DISC, and I was thinking about different words that start with DISC. And one of our future episodes, we're going to talk about discipleship. We're going to talk about disciples. And some of the words that start with DIS or DISC are disciples, discipline. But another word is, and this applies, I think, to what we're talking about, is discernment. Okay, yeah. And it's like, you don't eat everything. Yeah. You have a more discerning palate. Because if you don't have a discerning palate, guess what? You're not acting like a sheep. You're acting like a goat. Yeah. You're eating everything. When Jesus says, take heed what you hear, take heed how you hear, he says both. And it's like, my sheep hear my voice. I've seen videos before of of shepherds, of farmers, and I remember there was a video where there was a um, a group of students who had come to the farm, and they're standing at the fence, and he told them to call for the sheep, and he told them the word to use, the the call, whatever you want to say, the call, the call phrase. And these kids go down the line, and they're calling for the sheep, and the sheep are just ignoring them, and they're just chomping away at the grass, as you know, one little girl comes out, you know, and and calls for the sheep, and then a little boy comes out, and just four or five, yeah, call for the sheep, and the sheep pay them no attention at all, and then the shepherd calls out, and all the sheep immediately lift their heads and follow the shepherd. That's the point. And it's like, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Yeah. We're not following strangers. We're not following someone else. It's like, uh-uh, we look to Jesus. Right. That's what we do. That's what it means to be a Christian. We are a follower of Christ. So here, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. Um. Oh, there was another point I wanted to make about that, and I can't remember what it was. I lost, I lost it, Daniel. I hate it when I lose my points. <laughs> Never happens to me. When I when I don't write them down. Okay, so we've spoken about protection. We've spoken about my sheep hear my voice. One of the other points we can make from the passage is actually within the two. We sort of looked at the beginning of John 10, looked a little bit at the latter end of John 10. This is John 10 at verse... At verse 16, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. I don't know who that could be other than the Gentiles. Yeah. I I don't know who else he could be talking about other than the Gentiles to say, and did, did the hearers there, did they understand that? Probably not. (laughs) Probably not. Probably but not. when we he, see the str- we see the struggle with that for the Jewish people, they were still wanting it to be you know just them you know looking throughout the scriptures, even throughout the New Testament, there was these different things that were happening that were causing them to struggle, want, not wanting to, or not wanting to believe that they were the not the only ones that were going to receive salvation. Yeah, uh, but I, I'm I'm with you on this where it's, it's hard to be able to uh, not conclude and say that this is not the Gentiles because Jesus spoke when he spoke to Paul. You know, they're on the road to Damascus, and, yeah. or speaking. To Anna, I'm not speaking, not speaking, speaking to Ananias about right. Saul of Tarsus. He goes on saying, "He's a chosen vessel of mine. He's going to go and be able to preach to not only the Jews, kings, right, but Gentiles as yeah. well." Yep. Right, so there, there was a greater plan that Jesus yeah. had in store for yeah everyone still. And there in Acts one, Terry in Jerusalem, and it's going to spread, yeah, to Judea, Samaria, and to the whole world. Well, what are we talking about with the whole world? We're talking about Gentiles as well. Yeah. We're not just talking about Jews that had been dispersed and never came back after captivity. We're talking about Gentiles. Yeah. And that's that was the plan. That was the plan going all the way back to the very beginning with Abraham. Yeah. And you have in you all the nations, plural, will be blessed. It's always been the plan. 
It's always been the plan to bless the Gentiles. And here, as we have other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Yeah. And you have this this picture, and them I also must bring, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. I, I'm thinking as well what, what Paul writes over there in Galatians 3. Now, this time, instead of using the word Gentile, you know, sometimes we'll substitute Gentile and Greek, and it yeah, mean, yeah. means sure. meaning the same about thing. The same people. Most likely, in, in almost all cases, unless they actually talk to someone who was a Greek, maybe that's about the only yeah. time that... But anyway, in verse 28 of Galatians 3, he says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. There's one shepherd. Right being able to answer this and being able to take care of the sheep and it's Jews, anyone who's not a Jew, whether you call them the Gentiles or whether you call them the Greek yeah. in different, different parts of the Bible. There, there is one flock. Yes. One flock. There's one flock. There's one shepherd. Now what this speaks to is this helps us when we are dealing with or facing issues surrounding, for example, there are those who, who think Israel today talking about that piece of land in the Middle East and talking about Jews, okay? And we're not talking about Jewish Jews who obey Jesus. We're talking about Jews who are practicing Judaism. And they think, oh, well, well, they're, they're still God's people over there. And it's like, wait a minute, they don't, they haven't submitted to Jesus. They haven't recognized Jesus. Yeah. So as the Messiah. For a Messiah, yeah. So how could they, and and a majority of the religious world believes this. Yeah. So how could they still be God's people? And what they'll say is, oh well, there's there's a plan of salvation for the Gentiles, and there's another plan for for Jews who don't believe in Jesus, and therefore Jesus is going to come back and establish His kingdom. And at that point, and it's like, no, 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 <laughs> the kingdom has already been established. When he returns, it's not to build the kingdom, it's to deliver the kingdom. And there has never been a plan for the Jews and a different plan for the Gentiles. And this passage shows that. Other sheep which I have that are not of this flock, of this fold, them also I must bring and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. And it's like when it's all said and done, problem is it's not done yet here in John chapter 10. Yeah said no but when they hear my voice one flock one shepherd that really just puts down the whole idea of universalism being ex- being widely accepted as everyone it matters what what you're getting at what you're talking about is what it matters you're going to hear Jesus voice we're going to not just acknowledge him as being right. Jesus and Lord right. but he we got to do what he says hey they hear right. my voice they listen they raise their head up you're talking about that right. analogy with the sheep they'll raise up and they'll actually listen to the right. commands that the shepherd and they is follow offering. and they follow it exactly right. Looking at these different things, uh, pointing out the one flock, one shepherd. Right. That there's just one. There's there's one way. Jesus taught about that back in Matthew seven, about there being an easy way and a hard way. The hard way, you have to listen to Jesus, follow and do what He says. But He will be your shepherd. He will be our Lord and Savior. And again, as we look there, dropping down to verse twenty eight, I will give them what eternal life. Yeah, and. And while the Lord said, take my yoke upon you, learn from me, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, that doesn't mean we won't face trials. That's right. Psalm 23 shows that pretty clearly. Yea, he, makes us, he makes us to lie down death. by the green pastures. Yeah. He leads us by the still waters. But he also is with us through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes. There are trials. And that's one of the things. Ah, oh, I just remembered my point. <laughs> Awesome job, John. You gonna congratulate me? Oh, Congratulations. Man. Self five. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that one of the things shepherds do is they rotate their animals. If they just leave sheep in one place, they eat the grass down to the nubs. Yeah. There's a reason the shepherd leads the sheep. Yeah. And so I I think about um oh one of the passage oh it's a passage in the gospels where it talks about the steward brings out things old and new. Oh, where is that passage, Daniel? Let's see. Old and new. Let's see if I can pull it up remotely quickly. Let's see. Old and new. 
Yep. Matthew 13, verse 52. Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out his treasure, things new and old. Just to make the point, you've probably known preachers, I've known preachers who preached on one thing constantly. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, there there are other things in Scripture. I can, rem- I can remember that. I can remember specifically, like, growing up in southern Indiana, we had all the small churches where they yeah. didn't have preachers. Yeah. Like a, a full, dedicated, full-time preacher. Right. And my dad was one of them that was eventually started. That's how he got started preaching. And he'd go from place to place. But then what was what would they talk about? They would talk about... You know the plan of salvation, which I'm not going to say it's not that's necessary. Yeah. You, but also, the order of services; those are like the two big things. That but then you'd have a different speaker every Sunday, and they would go and they, and those were the two main things that people would talk about in those lessons. Yeah. And they'd hear those maybe three or four times a month on that very subject. My dad was very well aware of this because before he started preaching, you know, they would have different people come in from time to time facing those different circumstances. And he finally came to the, con- the conclusion, I'm going to start preaching on different, on, on all subjects yeah, because it's important. It's necessary. What you were just talking about, being able to rotate, being able to do these different right. things because we need to be able to be fed in different things. Does that mean that we can't talk about, for instance, the order of services or the plan of salvation? Absolutely not. Especially right. the plan of salvation. We can be able to incorporate that in many different things, but sometimes we do it. You and I will do a lesson on that particular subject, right? But we see the importance of being able to teach all of these different things and being able to continue to have these things, to be able to eat, to be able to grow, to be able to be nourished in everything. Yeah. And, and we'll we'll touch on that again here in just here in just a second. And actually for now, go ahead and let's come up to John twenty one. There we go. Yeah, let's come up to John twenty one where Jesus is this is after the resurrection. He's talking with with Peter, and you have John twenty one, verse fifteen. When they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Of all the points we can make, and and one of the points, and I hope folks have studied this before, where the word love there that Jesus uses is not the same word that Peter uses, but that's for another study. What I wanted to key in on was the feed my lambs, tend my sheep, and feed my sheep. One of the points we can make, you have that picture of maturing from Mm -hmm. lambs to sheep yes and this is where like you're talking about it's nothing wrong with starting at the starting point exactly that's fine you start as a lamb and you feed my lambs but at some point you move on and you grow and that's there's ample passages that talk about that one is there in hebrews where he says by this time you ought to be teachers you need someone to teach you again and you have the the basic principles they had come to they had come to to have to drink milk. How does that verse put it there? In Hebrews, Hebrews. let's see. Hebrews five at verse twelve. Yeah. By this time you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you again the first principles, the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. Solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So you have this picture of maturing, and we need to mature. You, you start somewhere. You start as lambs, and it's like, feed my lambs, Peter. It's like, just feed them. <laughs> yeah. Feed them, feed them, feed them. Now there comes a point where it's, okay, tend my sheep, and the shepherd has a rod and a staff for a reason. It's not just to defend from outward forces. It's also to deal with sometimes sheep can be belligerent too. Yeah. Believe it or not, even present company, myself included, <laughs> sometimes sometimes we need the rod and and the the hook. Yeah. Right? The shepherd's hook, the staff. Sometimes we need those things. And if we're not behaving like we need to behave, then do not despise the chastening of the Lord. 
and they are there for outward forces. They are also there to protect us from ourselves, frankly, and to keep us from getting away. Sometimes sheep try to get away, and that's what where the shepherd hooks the leg, and it's like drags them back. Yeah, and that's what they're there for. So tend my sheep. We're we're going to talk more about discipline in future future episodes because that's a big one that a lot of people have a problem with. But that's what we're talking about. We're talking about training and tending of the sheep. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, and then and then if they are if there we are in the pasture and it's like okay, tend them. And then the third one is feed them. Keep feeding them. Yeah. Feed them. <laughs> it, it, that, that's what you know. That's what Jesus taught in the Great Commission. You know. Yeah. Looking there in Matthew, I, yeah. I'm thinking immediately Matthew 28, 18 yeah. to 20. Jesus talks about you know baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. How, how are we going to do that? Well, we got to preach the gospel. There's that. There's that. There's some of that feeding. Right. Make disciples of you know, all nations. There, and then that you know, initial teaching. The, yeah. There's the there's there's the initial right. teaching or the feeding. Yeah. Then as we look at it, then he says you know teach them right you know he, he doesn't just stop there and say well you fed them there to be able to right. do what they now you gotta now you gotta tend to them make disciples you gotta, you gotta tend to baptize them, them and now teach them to observe all things yeah I've there's, a, there's that there's that extra feeding there's that all extra things develop all things you know Man, that's a things. lot yeah. yeah there's a lot of different things but you know it all goes back to hearing you know, hearing the voice of jesus we which, say that's a lot but it's man compare the new testament to the old testament yeah there's a lot of rules that there was a lot more rules and regulate. I mean, I'm not saying there's rules or there's rules or regulations yeah. for us today, there's, but it's the law, yeah. the law of Liberty, as it's yeah. called the law of Christ. Exactly. James one. If you love me, keep my that. commandments. They are commandments, but if we love him, they are not burdensome. Yeah. Yeah. James one twenty five says, look at the law of Liberty. How do we do it? We hear going yeah. back to what go, I mean, right. it, it, we're, we're, we're circling the wagon again, coming back to hear my voice is what Jesus is saying. And also do them there. Yeah. You know, we see that there that man will be perfect right. what he does. And being able to do those things. Yep. So that, that figure here as it's speaking of maturity. No, I, I will say and let me let me put it a somewhat of a similar but a slightly different way. You cannot keep chewing on the same thing. Okay, you need to grow. However, if like in Hebrews, if you are not swallowing that first thing, uh, well, then you may have to keep chewing on it. Yeah. Namely, if you're if you're kicking against the goads and you're not, you know, if for some reason you're kicking against repentance, you're kicking against baptism, you're kicking against, you know, how many times when people ask you, you know, I want to have a Bible study. Okay, what would you like to study? I want to study Revelation. Uh, the first, that's like, the we first one that like, we go we to a lot of we're times. We're not starting with Revelation. Yeah. You don't start at the end. Yeah. You start at the starting point. Yeah. You know, sometimes when I do those different Bible studies and I have that, well, we'll get to Revelation, but let's yeah. start over here, for instance. Let's start in Mark yeah. or somewhere there, being able to understand some of the beginnings yeah. of where we come from and how we fit into God's scheme of redemption. Feed my lambs. Yeah. You start there. Yeah. And then you tend. And that word is the word for for pastor or shepherd. Yeah. It's like shepherd my, shepherd my sheep. Feed my sheep. Right. And let them eat. Yeah. Let him eat. And that constant looking to Jesus and what is our appetite for God's word? And I think that's a big one. What is our appetite for God's word? Is it just a few minutes on Sunday or is it is it our daily bread? Is it, man, that preacher better be done by 1130 or I'm going to be so mad at him. I've had people get mad at me if I go five minutes over. It's the weirdest thing. I say it's weird. I I I might have mentioned it before where I had a I was trying out at a place years ago and that was the first comment. We had a business meeting to be able to discuss anything if I was interested in being able to come there and then the first thing was, Well, if that preacher goes as long as he did today, we're not gonna get to lunch in time. You know what gets me <laughs> Pre- preaching is the only the uh, only work where basically people want us sometimes, not all people. Yeah. And, but this this goes to are we acting more like sheep or more like goats? How much do we want God's word? Yeah. Where it's the only work where people want us to work less. You know. Work le- work less but get the same benefits and everything. <laughs> you know. I, it's it's so bizarre. Yeah. 
You know, it, it we is. sit at a football game and we're like, man, if it goes to overtime, we're like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Baseball game, oh, extra innings. This is great. You know, if we go five minutes over on a Sunday, how dare he? Where's my bag of tomatoes? <laughs> <laughs> but if we are the Lord's sheep and it's like, we want to eat, we want to eat, we want to eat the good grass. We don't want the junk because we know at judgment day what the Lord said, I will divide the sheep from the goats yeah. and the goats go over there and the sheep go over there. And you have that separation. I'll also say about the sheep and the goats passage, uh, some of the commentators make the point that goats and sheep, Some there are some breeds in Palestine that look very similar. The good shepherd knows the difference. Yeah, He's like, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. And if people are not hearing the voice and not following him, you can think you're a sheep all day, all day long. You're either a goat, or you're a wolf. Well, one or the exactly. other. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we see the importance of being able to to listen to Jesus, to yeah. hear Him, to understand Him, to follow Him, to obey Him. You know, it, it matters. It, it does matter what we what we listen to. You know, I've had doctor's appointments over the last course of the last year where doctor reminds me it does matter what you put into your body. I'm right. trying to do what I can. Fair week's a little difficult. We'll just have to try to. Try to make do with that, but <laughs> but it matters, you know. When you think about what you put into your body, it does matter uh, the amount, the quantity, right? Uh, the quality as well with it. It all it, it all matters on what we do for our physical body. It's the same for our spiritual yeah. body. It matters what we do, and and again, what we put into our body, it comes from God's word. Jesus said He's the bread of life. He right. has offered all the things to sustain and to nourish our spiritual body. What are we going to listen to? Are we going to take it to heart? Are we going to put into it? Are we going to take the time to also digest it and to be able to actually get it down? Yep. You know, I know that's kind of a odd cliche being able to get it down like yeah. that, but it, but it's the truth of the matter is that we have to be able to, no, no. With, it has to, if, if it just stuck up here in our mouth, it's not going to go anywhere. And it's not going to provide anything. I mean, sorry, scripture uses the same metaphor because if we don't, if we don't swallow it yeah. and if we don't keep it down, uh, the Bible talks about the dog returning to its own vomit. Yeah. Jesus talked about lukewarm, what he felt about a lukewarm yeah. uh, church and everything. Yeah. He says so, he'll vomit it out of his mouth. The, the well. figure is you. So appreciate you, Daniel. Yes, appreciate everything as well. Yep. Hope, hope this study has been beneficial for you. We appreciate you listening. Feel free to like, comment, share all that, all that good stuff. But we, we thank you for joining us. We hope you tune in next week for another episode of looking to Jesus. Thank you. Sing.